Hello fanatics. Welcome or welcome back to Diamond Painting Fanatics. I am Cindy and I'm here with a true crime story time. Um, this one is uh, a mystery to say the least. But before we dive into today's video... I am working on my spooky cathedral from Diamond Art Studio and I'm doing it as part of a creative mummy of two. She is doing a movies in diamonds and I was chatting with Crafting with Kay um, and she was like, oh, you could do that as Beauty and the Beast Castle. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, it was already kitted up. Um, it had been kitted up a long time. Um... But yeah, I thought I'd pull that out and work on it while I am still missing in action. Um, my internet. As you may or may not know, I moved house on the 21st of December. Um, and obviously it was Christmas and everything else. I had already spoken to my internet company and said, hey, I want to transfer it to my new house cut it off now, let's go live so that when I get to my new house, I am up and running. Well, I was supposed to be up and running on the 5th of January and the guy turned up. I, I wasn't expecting him to, I was just, you know, they do this as a precaution type thing, but he turned up at 10 to 8 very prompt and it turns out that they have to not only dig up my garden to put a cable in they also have to dig up the street which needs permission from the council so I said to him well then how long is it going to be then and he said oh 10 working days well on the day that he came it's dead on two weeks again. So that means I have been without internet for four weeks. <sighs> when I spoke to the lady before I left, she was all very nice. She was all very chatty and everything else. Not once did she say, um, yeah, no, we have problems. We have some problems connecting you to uh, the internet on the other side. Not once did she say that, um, even though she checked and said, yeah, no, there's um, a live feed. In Netflix. I don't understand all this stuff, you know. Um, I, I switch the on button and I have internet. That's, that's about as much as I know. But she was like, yeah, no, you've got a live feed. That's perfect. That's awesome. Turns out I don't. So I don't know what she was looking at or what she was looking at check-in, but, yeah. So, I am pre-recording a true crime. I know you've missed a week <laughs> because I was supposed to be back on the Thursday, but I wasn't. So, I'm doing another true crime. So, now that you have the backstory, uh, grab your project, come join me, and uh, I'll be working on this spooky castle uh, while I await internet. <sighs> okay, so today we are going to talk about Melissa Caddick. I don't know if you've heard of this or not, but it's a very intriguing case. One I I have a vested interest in. Um, yeah, she is an Australian lady who just vanished off the off planet Earth. She's just completely vanished. No one knows if she's alive or deceased or anything so very very intriguing um and she's also 
an enigma as a person anyway. So, yeah, let's dive into this case. She disappeared in November 2020. So it's quite a recent thing and we're still all like looking into it and trying to find answers and everything else. So as always, I will begin with the early life. Um, Melissa Caddock was born Melissa Louise Grimley on the 21st of April in 1971. And she grew up in a southern suburb of Sydney. After graduating high school, Melissa enrolled in a secretarial and business administration course at Patrick's College, Australia, in Sydney. Her resume reportedly included fictitious qualifications, including degrees in finance from the University of Technology, Sydney, which later said it had, quote, no record of completion of a graduate diploma in finance or masters of business in finance or indeed any qualification under the name of Melissa Caddock or Melissa Grimley, end quote. After initially working in NRMA's investment division, Melissa joined the Sydney branch of a boutique investment bank as an office administrator. It has been alleged that in 1998, six months after taking the job, she was discovered to have stolen less than $2,000 from the company by forging her boss's signature on several cheques. It is understood that rather than pursue prosecution, the company gave Melissa the option of leaving the office without the police being summoned or the money being returned. Shortly afterwards, Melissa was hired as a financial advisor for Wise Financial Services. A subsidiary of ING and eventually purchased a 25% stake in the business after borrowing $750,000. By 2003, she had become so well regarded in her field that she was featured on a cover of the trade magazine Independent Financial Advisor. However, Melissa fell out with Wise when the company refused to allow her to recommend property and shares to her clients due to compliance rules. In later years, Melissa's extravagant spending drew suspicion among her acquaintances. It has been alleged that... When questioned about how she could financially support her lavish lifestyle, she concocted different stories about a windfall payment she had received from Wise, either in the form of an $86 million severance package or as a large payout from a sexual harassment claim. In reality, the only money she received in the separation from Wise was a return of her original $750,000 investment, consequent to signing a five-year non-compete agreement. Melissa's first husband, Tony Caddock, was a builder's labourer originally from England. They married in a ceremony at the Garrison Church in Millers Point, Sydney, on the 20th of April 2000. Their son was born in 2006, was aged 14 
at the time of Melissa's disappearance in 2020. At his wife's urging, Tony, who had studied political science back in England, completed his law degree and was admitted as a solicitor. In 2010, the family moved abroad to Essex, that's where I live, to live closer to Tony's family while he commuted daily to his job in London. It has been reported that Melissa did not work when she lived in England and quickly found herself bored with her surroundings. Claiming she needed to brush up on her financial skills, she persuaded her husband to agree to letting her travel to Switzerland for a conference. Tony later learned from a mutual friend that Melissa had actually travelled to Paris to meet with Anthony Coletti, her hairdresser from Sydney, and discovered that she had paid for his international travel expenses to continue their affair. Upon being confronted by Tony, Melissa cleaned out their home in Essex, emptied their joint bank accounts and moved back to Sydney with their son in January 2012. Upon returning to Australia, she falsely claimed to family and friends that Tony had been a controlling and abusive spouse. The couple divorced in 2013 and Melissa married Coletti later that year. During an eight-year period from October 2012 until 2019, it's believed that Melissa misappropriated 30 million Australian dollars in client funds which primarily came from family and friends. It is understood she deposited these funds into 37 bank accounts. The Federal Court of Australia discovered that her behaviour intensified each year, with her most profitable year being 2019. Melissa has allegedly spent investors' finances on two homes in Sydney's eastern suburbs, as well as luxury cars, designer clothing, artwork and jewellery. As clients invested money, Melissa created fabricated ComSec portfolio statements and fake account numbers to show her investors what return they had achieved, making them falsely believe that they had invested in shares. Council for Australian Securities and Investments Commission, Farid Assad, SE, said, quote, as befitting a successful businesswoman, end quote. Melissa exploited the incomes of her crimes to acquire all the trappings of wealth and that her success was all a facade and the financial services business was an elaborate front for uh, Melissa's Ponzi scheme. In April 2021, after Melissa's presumed death, ASIC dropped 38 criminal charges against her. In November 2021, the court discovered that Melissa and her company, which bargained with tens of millions of investors' money, was operating without the proper financial licence between October 2012 and November 
2020. Her possessions, including her $6 million home, will be sold in an effort to repay the 72 clients who claim that they are owed more than $23 million Australian dollars. In February 2012, Coletti, her husband, objected to the sale of the home and the federal court gave Melissa's family six weeks to stake their claims over Melissa's home and penthouse apartment in Edgecliff where Melissa's parents reside. Melissa's parents would be making a claim on the basis of handing their daughter $1.3 million on the understanding they would own part of the Edgecliff home and have life tenancy. In April 2022, Melissa's parents said in a statement filed in the federal court that, quote, Melissa dishonestly and fraudulently took their money. In April 2022, Kelly made a claim through the federal court for a share of Melissa's assets, including her Gucci wedding dress, $7 million in shares, $2 million worth of jewellery, two properties he claims are valued at $20 million, and the proceeds from the sale of their luxury cars. In May 2022, the Federal Court ordered Coletti to vacate the home so it could be sold by liquidators. Melissa vanished on the 12th of November 2020, the morning after ASIC agents and the Australian Federal Police raided her home in Dover Heights. She was last heard by her son, who detected a door shutting at around 5.30am and presumed it was Melissa going for her daily exercise. Melissa left behind all of her possessions, including her mobile phone, on the 26th of February 2021, Michael Willing, Assistant Commissioner of the New South Wales Police Force, held a press conference regarding a break in Melissa's disappearance. On the previous Sunday, the 21st of February, a shoe containing a decomposed human foot was discovered washed up on Bonda Beach in on the state's south coast, just south of Tathra, some 500 kilometres from where Melissa was last seen. The shoe matched her size and fit the description of the footwear she had been seen wearing during the raid of her home on November the 11th, 2020. Subsequent DNA testing of samples gathered from her toothbrush as well as from family members confirmed the foot belonged to Melissa. The foot's southern location matched the tidal and drift pattern modelling undertaken by the Marine Police, raising the possibility that if a body had entered the water near Dover Heights around the time of her disappearance, it would likely reach the shore somewhere near the south coast town of Bermangai. According to Willing, 
Melissa's disappearance was distressing for many people, including her clients, family and friends. Although there was an extensive review of CCTV footage, her exact whereabouts after leaving her house were unknown, as the footage did not cover the entire area from where she disappeared. Willing also described the case as one of the most high-profile missing person cases he has seen in 30 years years. So let's talk about the theories here because obviously she's been raided, she's been um, caught out with millions. I mean this woman was living a lavish lifestyle so she either collected money uh, and left but my, my problem with this is that her son would you leave your son behind? It's it's this is all very very strange. Okay, how Melissa's foot ended up in the ocean is unknown. Nothing has been ruled out by New South Wales police, including murder, suicide, and the possibility that she's faked her own death. University of Newcastle Associate Professor of Criminology, Dr. Mallet, who spoke to Seven Network's Weekend Sunrise, pointed out that losing a foot should not immediately mean Melissa is deceased, saying, quote, When it was just a foot... I would caution against the possibility that somebody is deceased. You can survive without your foot. End quote. In an October 2021 interview, Coletti claimed that Melissa never stole any money and that somebody killed his wife. Other theories suggested by criminologists include Melissa going into hiding or even cutting off her own foot as a red herring. Alternatively, it has been theorised that Coletti was assisting her in hiding. Nobody knows. Nobody knows where this woman is, if she's alive, if she's deceased, if she's in hiding. Um, I mean, it is quite possible that she had enough cash um, to to go anywhere. Um, as far as we can see, or as far as I know, I should say, as far as I know, she left behind her son and her husband. Now, they could well be in on it. Do you know what I mean? They could well know where she is. They could well be keeping her informed of what's going on. Um, the houses are being sold. Maybe she has a new identity when you have that much money. Anything is possible. Um, but it is a complete mystery. It is completely unknown. Um, I was watching a documentary on this and... Her friends are so angry because, like, she's she's taken millions off of these people. Um, you know, they're not they're not these like super duper rich people. They are just hard working um, people who just handed over money, believing that they were getting a return on their investments. Um, it's heartbreaking, it really is heartbreaking and that the fact that she done that to her friends. They're not like friends of friends, they were her friends and her family, even her mum and dad weren't safe. So, you know, they handed her 1.3 million um, just so that they could continue living in the house. 
it is just heartbreaking. Um, and then she's just completely disappeared. And one of her friends was saying, well, it's a foot. She can survive without a foot. Um, and you can. Um, and again, if you are desperate, the assumption would be that we've, we've found a foot. She's deceased. Um, was she murdered? Was it suicide? Uh, do you know what I mean? It, it it really is a puzzling case. Um, I really do hope we get answers at some point. I I would love to know where she is. Um, just for my own curiosity. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Will Will they catch up with her? Will they get there? I mean, they're selling. I mean, this wasn't just like jewelry you know, like fashion statements, it was like Christian Dior. And then even the husband said, oh, she had an, she had a meeting with Christian Dior. She would not have bailed on that. Um, guess what she did? Uh, so he thinks that his wife's been murdered. Um, others think she's in hiding. Who knows? So there you go. There is a Melissa... Louise Caddock and the disappearance I mean it's insane isn't it financial gain Melissa vanished the day after the agents and federal police raided her home and again that's odd timing she would got away with it for years and years and years and the day that they raided, the next day she disappeared. So, um, you know, of 30 million Australian dollars from friends and family. So, let me know your thoughts. Is she in hiding? Is she alive? Is she deceased? Is it murder, suicide? The options are limitless on this case. But I do hope answers do come. Um, I think it'll be a while yet, a a long while yet. But I do believe they will come. Um, I really do. Um, Yeah, let me know your thoughts. And I shall see you next week with another true crime story time with me. Thank you so much for keeping me company. I really do appreciate it. And as always, if you're not subscribed, please do so. Um, Yeah. Let me know what you think of this case. It's very, very puzzling. Very puzzling. Stay safe out there.